Ross Bowman Podcast. You better listen. Welcome back to the Ross Bolin Podcast, otherwise known as RBP, presented by Bolin Media. I am your host, Ross Bolin, back again, as always, with your co-host, Chris Coles. Colson. Chris, say hi. Howdy, howdy. How if you're doing? new here, our podcast has been around for a few years now. We're a comedy show with a focus on mental health. We talk music history, not music history, music comma history. Well, sometimes no comma. Also sometimes music, music history, history yeah. sports, animals, current events, and more. And I wanted to start today's show by doing a simple yet all-important PSA. If you're going outdoors for an extended period of time, wear sunscreen, kids. Yeah, do that. Christopher Coulson is lake trash. Admitted lake <laughs> trash. And today, due to a late-night stream on twitch.tv slash boss rolling leading to an unfortunate wardrobe situation... <sighs> His very, very badly burned shoulders and arms are visible for all to see on YouTube.com slash Bolin Media. And it's just, it's, you know. Well, they're not sunburned anymore. They're just now paying the price of the sunburn that they once held by peeling and me losing all of my tan. Also, You look like a leper. Yes, I do. Also, because of my haircut. Mm. You also got a haircut. You achieved a haircut. I did. One step forward, two steps backwards. Sure. Uh, because of the haircut, I would say more like three steps. It's been, it's going to be a rough like week to get acclimated, but because of the haircut, because I had so much hair that was covering my face, Yeah. my face is significantly paler than the rest of my body, which is something that will need to be fixed with time. With time. Or maybe my body just palens up to my face. Very, that's what it would happen if it was me. Well... Yeah. But I don't know how your melatonin operates comparatively to mine. Yeah, but yeah, definitely wear sunscreen. Absolutely. Or a sun shirt. And we're talking specifically to you, Lake Trash. Yes, I know. And look, 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 look. Look, I put let me, on No, sunscreen. let me explain what I say when I mean Lake, when I say Lake Trash, what I mean. Lake people just don't give a fuck, and it's <laughs> fine. I get it. My dad grew up Lake people, but Lake Trash is a very real thing, and Lake Trash is like... Nah, I'm stronger than the sun, and COVID doesn't exist. So they're just fucking out there getting it without sunscreen on. That's lake trash. To be fair, once I usually once I have that like base layer of tan, I don't usually get burned. I was just in the sun for so much time over Labor Day weekend for work purposes. Okay, not because I was no, yeah, no, yeah, my ass off. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying for work purposes. I'm just saying. In general. But I could have there, done a better job with my sunscreen. Interestingly, two types of lake trash. Sure. Boat owners. Okay. And, and then the sycophants. And the fucking, the, fu- the fucking bottom, the fucking barnacles that attach to the boat owners. Barnacles. That's it. Boat owners and barnacles. But there's two types of boat owners, too, that you can be, there can. Okay, I'm, pr- I'm sure there are plenty of categories. But the simplest one, boat owners. And those are the people who have the boats. They own them. But I'm saying this. And they go out. Then it's everybody who just piles onto those fucking things. But there's the boat owner that that actively looks for the sycophants. Sure. And then there's the one that is like more I want to take my people out and just my people. You know what I mean? I, I believe in you know I believe I mean? that. Absolutely. But does does the latter doesn't exist in Austin, Texas. As unfortunately. I've seen so far, I would agree with that. You know Lake Trash though. Oh yeah. You know. Yeah. I know. Way overly boxy fishing shirt. Just obnoxious croakies. Oh, like, unnecessarily obnoxious cro- croakies. That's one of the characteristics that my dad carried with him still to this day as growing up lake trash on a lake. He still has that. Why, why, why do your croakies need to l- be able to carry a full body if do they were attacked? Like, they're, they're such big floaters. Y'all don't do croakies in the, what are you, the North Central East? The North Central East. Yeah, that's where the Carolinas are, East right? East Coast. It's just the Southeast, I guess, technically. You guys are just like the South Middle, South Central. We're just middle You're bottom. Regardless, <laughs> um, people don't really... I mean, you have the like southern, more Southern Coasters and Crokies types of people, but I would say more of my friends have now migrated to the circular frame glasses, aviator style, wire frames, a little more modern, sleek, stylish. That's Crokies just you. Thing of the past. No. You're just describing you. No, I'm not. I don't, none of my friends back home wear croquis anymore. And you're a weird mix. You're like a, a you're like a lake trash hippie. That also has cowboy boots. Yeah, you're like you're basically. I'm uh, You're basically an Ole Miss frat guy. 
That's you. That's your that's your brand. That's hate, my brand. I'd hate to tell you, but that's your brand. Ole Miss frat guy. And it's, just it's like preppy though. mixed mixed with like fucking Are we uh, talking about in just appearance stylistically? No, your entire essence, even down to your soul. Your oh. core your your core being. It's like it's like preppy mixed with Grateful Dead vibes. Okay. I'm telling you, man, you okay. might not know this, but you, you need to attribute a lot of your stylistic choices to, to Ole, Ole Miss, Miss frat guys in the, uh, in the early to late 2000s. Wow. Yeah. That's maybe not when I would necessarily want to be an Ole Miss frat guy. Um, but sure, sure. I'll, I'll roll I, There the isn't a period there. of time in I'll which I would want to be there. an Ole Miss frat guy. Really? Not a single one. Actually, good point. The further back we go, the worse it gets. Yeah, you can't really move a direction and have things go well <laughs> picking that. I'm just saying, no offense to Ole Miss frat guys, it's just like... I actually have a lot of buddies that are Ole Miss frat guys. Shout to the, shouts to them. There's just Friends a lot them. that can go wrong there. Let me put it yeah. that way. They seem to have a good time. The Grove was fun. I've been once. It was like a dust storm. Never and been. I fell asleep in a chair and a pair. I woke up with a paramedic like checking my It was like a dust storm? That's your description of the Grove? It a was place that's described as like college football's tailgate heaven. And your first <laughs> words in your review are, it was like a dust storm? It was dusty, man. No shit. Okay, every picture well, I've seen, it rained. looked like a glorious... It, it, it usually is, but when it doesn't rain for like a week, so many people are pounding around with stiletto or not stilettos, with platform heels and cowboy boots that eventually dust arises from mm. the past. I wonder if there's Dillo dirt under there. I always wonder, Chris. Armadillos? Now I always fucking wonder. Spe- speaking of tailgating, Lake Trash and the like, new sponsor alert, listen up. I think we're actually the first podcast this company has ever sponsored, and I'm excited to share them with everyone. RBP332 is brought to you by Poncho Outdoors. Somewhere along the way, someone decided that fishing shirts should fit like trash bags. They put too much stuff on them and in them, and everybody else followed. Poncho wanted to be different and better. That they are, my friends. That they are. Wearing one of their fine shirts right now, which you can see if you're watching on YouTube.com slash Bowling Media. Beautiful. Most comfortable fishing shirt I've ever owned. I walked into the studio and Mike was like, are you wearing are you wearing a shirt with buttons on it? It's definitely the best looking fishing shirt I've ever owned or seen. 100%. And frankly, I've seen a lot of fishing shirts down in Texas, folks. Poncho is awesome. Uh, it's, it's just like a much sleeker, more like athletic, better fitting, more comfortable and stylish fishing shirt. It's better. And here's what Poncho wants you to do. Go to their website, ponchooutdoors.com, P-O-N-C-H-O, outdoors.com, and pick a hat. Throw that hat in your cart first. Now shop to your heart's desire and use the code RBP when you check out. And that hat is fucking free, baby. Look at that. Free 99 for the hat you chose up front, pow, motherfucker. Sick hats, too. That's Poncho Outdoors. Again, best fishing shirt I've ever owned. Breathable, lightweight, and simple. No cargo short pockets on your chest. No Velcro. No jamming every sized person into a single fit. Just a high-quality shirt that fits in every way. Phenomenal hats as well. So make sure you go to ponchooutdoors.com. Throw a hat in your cart. Grab yourself at least one of these badass shirts, and boom. The hat is free when you check out and use the code RBP. Ponchooutdoors.com. Code RBP for a free hat when you go shopping for the best fishing shirt you'll ever own. Grab one for your boyfriend or dad or uncle or brother or sister or whoever in your life is obsessed with fishing shirts. And Poncho Outdoors will melt their brains. Now time for some announcements and shouts. Happy birthday to Isaac, turning 20 on September 19th. Also, Kanye West took a piss in his Grammy this morning. He did. Uh, in the toilet. Well, technically, he yes, took to a be piss clear. in the toilet with his Grammy. He placed the Grammy in the, in the toilet. Yes. And then he pissed on the Grammy in the toilet. Yes. Which the obvious response from many people on social media was, well, didn't he then have to retrieve the Grammy from the toilet? And people, you're missing the point. Well, also, Here, that's... Here's the point disrespecting the Grammy by peeing on it. That is the point. Also, to be fair, Kanye does have the amount of wealth that he theoretically could just close off a bathroom for forever and just be like, we're not going to use this one. Literally. He could throw, he could have done that and thrown an incendiary grenade in there and been like, and that bathroom no longer exists. Yeah, which is what I like to think that he did after that. So he's been on a really insane Twitter tirade for about 48 hours now. That's a mix of like him saying he's going to free all the musicians in the world, that he is the Moses of the music industry and is going to get all the artists their masters back. Yes. That's a whole other thing. If you want to understand how the masters in Google in uh, music industry works, just Google it. I don't. We don't have time for that today. But um, and then he'll be like a picture of uh, a walkway in his house, and he talks about how all of the some type of architecture. It's a word I don't know. He only gets museum quality 
that type of architecture added into his house. And sure. it's like the things you walk through. Archways? There, yeah, but it's not that word. Their house, no, no cap. Like the, I, I am sure. not a huge fan of anything going on with the Kardashians or or Kanye's at the moment. So you're not gonna miss keeping up with the Kardashians. I'm not gonna miss the final season when it but, comes to his tragic end. So no. you're not gonna miss the final season. So you'll be there for every episode. I'm not. I am going to miss the final season as I've missed every preceding season. Ah. Their house, though. Kim and Ye's house is among the dopest things I've ever seen. It's incredible. And now there's a piss-soaked Grammy in there somewhere. I love the person who responded to it with Drake drinking from his Grammy. Anyway, not sure what that's about, but it's something we needed to discuss in some capacity, so now we have. YouTube.com slash Media is where you can watch every episode of this show. If you want to do that instead of just listen, you can see our shining faces. We wave to the camera, and today you can see Chris and the uh, disturbing skin damage done to his shoulders as a result of total lack of self-responsibility uh, in applying sunscreen. On twitch.tv slash boss Roland, that's Ross Bolin with the B and the R reverse, twitched, twitch T W I T C H twitch.tv slash boss Roland. Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 7 p.m. Central, you can catch me and this gentleman, Chris Colson, live. Uh, we've been playing uh, Call of Duty and Fall Guys. We've been mixing in a new game called Among Us, which is a blast. We play with up to 10. 10. Well, Technically, eight, eight others. podcast listeners at a yeah. time. We'll drag them in with us. We've been squatting up with podcast listeners on Warzone. Our Twitch community is thriving. It's awesome. We've got up to over 100 viewers the last few nights in a row. We've been putting in serious work. And okay. Coles has an announcement. Uh, it is my best friend Chandler Frazier's 22nd birthday today. Oh, so I thought it was going to be related Chandler. to Twitch. Oh, no. Sorry. On a side note, happy birthday, Chandler. Sorry. sorry also, we got well. emotes for our level one subs finally. We finally got emotes done. We got the dude who did Arian Foster, a.k.a. Bobby Fino's emotes, to make ours for our subscribers. We have a Bill Chungus emote that is probably the funniest emote on Twitch. It's epic. The guy absolutely nailed it. We Maybe. also have the mug shot. We have a gang, gang, gang. We've got a girl gang one for all of our female supporters on Twitch. We've got uh, Peace Be With You one. We've got a smoke, smoke Break one that he's working on. A couple more in the works. We're going to be bringing a lot of things to twitch.tv slash boss rolling. So, yeah. Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, 7 p.m. Central. Any other announcements from you? Uh, no, I think that covers it today. First segment. Insane headlines of the day. So you know how we like to do this segment. We pull a few insane headlines of the day or the week. Sometimes one will be like a month old. It doesn't matter. If it's insane enough and we have the desire to talk about it, that is what this segment is for. Uh, sometimes the stories are cool and inspiring. Sometimes they're insane and weird you out. Sometimes they're just disturbing. And sometimes they're hilarious. You never know what you're going to get. First up, WNBA star Maya Moore marries wrongfully convicted man she helped free from prison. So this has been a cool story for... A very extended period of time that I'm sure many of you who follow sports uh, or just pay attention to relevant news stories have heard a little bit about here and there. Because Maya Moore, um, very important WNBA player. Like, obviously the WNBA gets made fun of a lot for being sort of irrelevant. It has very much been on a resurgence the last year or two. Okay? Uh, they've got a lot of the NBA guys supporting them more. Finally, the women of the WNBA are giving more of the shine they deserve. But for those of you who are unaware, as a result of the WA, WNBA getting less shine, Maya Moore, she's won four WNBA championships as a member of the Minnesota Lynx. She was the league MVP in 2014, the 2011 WNBA Rookie of the Year, a six-time All-Star, five-time All-WNBA First Team honoree, won two national championships at UConn. If you follow sports and you don't know who Maya Moore is, you're, you're very, very weird. Yeah, she's like one of the all-time greats in the WNBA, correct? And in college basketball. Um, which is why it's such a big deal that at 31 years old, she paused her playing career in 2019 to help overturn this man, Jeremy Iron, Jonathan Irons, excuse me, uh, overturn his conviction. He was sentenced to 50 years in prison in 1998 after being convicted of breaking into a Missouri home and twice shooting a homeowner. In March, a judge ruled that prosecutors had suppressed fingerprint evidence that would have st strengthened Irons' defense, and he was released from prison on July 1st. That's pretty incredible, honestly. So it's Maya Moore had helped get this o conviction overturned. Still 22 years later, which is still... That's an insane amount of time to be in prison. It happens to convicted. so many people. I know. And then Mo Moore and Irons appeared on Good Morning America this morning... 
and decided to announce that they are, they've been married. She's quote, we wanted to announce today that we are super excited to continue the work that we've been doing together, but doing it as a married couple. We're excited to share this new chapter of life together. They, uh, they're married. That's pretty incredible. What a story there. Unbelievable story. And just, just a cool, I mean, to put your own life on hold to free somebody else and then having it just so happen that you fall in love with that person and then y'all get married is, is inc- it's incredible. We got kind of a Palm Springs scenario right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? A if little you've bit. you've seen that movie. A little bit. Just happens so that the one person that just has to be fate, you know, happens like that sometimes. Universe is a crazy place. But the Except WNBA- in Palm Springs, nobody was wrongfully put in prison. That's very true. That's, that's yeah, very true. As part of a systemic issue. Andy Samberg was just locked into a time loop, which is just a little different. crushing beers. And just, yeah. Um... But the WNBA has getting, been getting a significant amount of shine for their social justice work during the uh, NBA bubble and everything like that. I remember they stepped up big time, especially when the the day or two of boycotts that the NBA and WNBA did. I believe the WNBA players might have done it before the second game even happened in the NBA, like right after the Bucks. Yes, they came out with all the. It was the that s- evening. Seven shots shirts. Yeah. Um, so go, good for them. That's awesome for Maya Moore and for Jonathan Irons. Really incredible story there. On a similar note, our next headline is a 14,000 year old puppy whose perfectly preserved body was found in Russia munched on a woolly rhino for its last meal. Yeah, I didn't even know woolly rhinos existed. I'm going to be honest. I have heard of a woolly mammoth, never a woolly rhino. I want... I kind of wish woolly rhinos were still around, though. I feel like those would be tight. I wish woolly everything was still around. True, frankly. everything's better woolly style. Yes, nice look, and hairy, look very up, soft. I'm look up the woolly rhinoceros, though, dude. Woolly because rhino. It looks just terrifying. Happy. I, I, I like enjoyable. A, like a, a stuffed animal on acid. Oh, no! It's it's like no, it's not a stuffed animal on acid. It's what you see when you're. L- when you look at your stuffed animal while on acid, yeah. having a bad trip. Yeah. This is what it looks like. Yeah, it's not great. Wow, maybe everything shouldn't be woolly. Uh, yeah, now, now I'm... I'm, I'm fl- cause, uh, the furries are going to disagree, and obviously we have a large furry community that listens to this podcast. We are but, a furry podcast. But this isn't it, the woolly rhino. This isn't it. Anyway, they found, uh, they found a puppy from 14,000 years ago, okay, uh, that... Apparently, it had a piece of what could have been one of the last woolly rhinos to ever exist inside of its stomach. Did puppies make woolly rhinos go extinct? This puppy, it's possible. This was just a beast of a puppy. Because this has been dated, the puppy, to about 14,000 years ago. The woolly rhinoceros went extinct 14,000 years ago. So potentially, this puppy has eaten one of the last remaining woolly rhinos. According to Love Dalen, a professor of evolutionary genetics at the Center for Paleogenetics, a joint venture between Stockholm University and the Swedish Museum of Natural History. Well, that's pretty incredible as well. I love some of these quotes from CNN. Scientists don't know how the puppy came to have a piece of the rhino in its stomach. What the fuck do you mean they don't know? There's only two ways in. Either the puppy ate the woolly rhino. Uh Uh-huh. Or? Or somebody shoved a piece of that woolly rhino (laughs) up that puppy's ass. How do you think the latter is likely, fucking Mr. Scientist? It could have been a religious thing back then. You never know. The hunter-gatherers, maybe for good luck, extra fuel. Colonostomy? Hey, you never know. People, people came up with crazy stuff over the course of human history. That's what I'm saying. At some point, very could have easily been a thing. Shoving woolly rhino. Actually, well. But a caveman mm-hmm. was like, ah, Steve, we're going hunting today. You know the rules. Let's go shove a piece of uh, uh, woolly rhino up a puppy's ass for good luck before we go hunting. Gave him the scent. They thought it gave him the scent. Made him smell out the woolly rhinos better. I'm not going to try to put myself mentally on the level of a caveman. Well, to be fair, 14,000 years ago wouldn't have been cavemen probably more like hunter gatherers they theoretically could have been living in caves but they definitely weren't do you really have that timeline in your head like yeah. human history timeline 100 percent. this is right about the time of the younger dryas was about to happen don't know what was, that is it was a period of uh extreme climate huh. change where the sea levels rose drastically uh now historians believe it was caused by a asteroid hitting greenland 
right about this time. Which a caused, word? That's what caused all the, uh, like, woolly mammoths. This is and, why I don't recycle and party all night and every day, because it doesn't fucking matter, and, and we're just going to get hit by an asteroid. Nobody really talks about that, but, like, we probably are. Like, there's a, we, you know, every, every year you get that fucking headline every that pops July, up on your no, phone. No, listen, I'm not kidding. Every asteroid, July, pretty close. Every July and October, we pass through something called the Torrid Asteroid Belt. It comes, the reason we call it the Torrid Asteroid today. Belt is because it comes from the Taurus Constellation. But every year we pass by some asteroids sizing, like, the football stadiums. And we just are like, okay, we don't even talk about it. Talking about, like, a Ford Taurus? Torrid, yeah. The oh. Torrid Asteroid Belt. Torrid. Yeah, Torrid. Yeah. Not Taurus. T A U R. Ford Taurus. Meteor Five stream. Star safety called the Torrid vehicle. Meteor Stream. Ford sponsor the. No, I'm just kidding. It's not. It's where the Tunguska uh, meteor came from. You know, the. the no. The, what? But yes, I do the get Tunguska a notey on my event? phone once a year that's like, asteroid, asteroid passing 17 billion miles away from this that could, and then and and then everybody on Twitter quote tweets it and goes. Just hit us, man. Enough is enough. 2020 sucks. Haha, <laughs> joke about fucking an asteroid. Just shut the fuck up. That's the next big gender reveal. An asteroid hits. It's either a boy or a girl. They're fill up an asteroid with blue or pink. Do it. Bring it on, baby. Do you see they're coming out with a movie about that? Do actually. it. Do it. About what? Uh, asteroids hitting the Earth. The, uh, the same thing we were just talking about. Yeah, oh. we they did this before. It's called no, Armageddon. It's and one of the top 10 best movies ever made. Top ten best movies ever na- ever made. Wow, I'm just old joking. claim for Armageddon. Just joking. But um. But seriously, Kung Fu Panda Hugh is one Grant of the top is ten that guy's best name? ever made. Hugh Grant. Uh, I want to say. Oh, nope, wherever nope, you're nope, going nope, right nope, now. Nope, 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 nope. Don't nope, advise. Nope, nope. <laughs> nope, not Hugh Grant. You do not seem to know what you're talking about, sir. Yeah. Hugh Grant is a 1990s, nope, nope, early 2000s Ash, British nope. heartthrob that starred in movies it. mostly with Julia Roberts. Yep, not that one. Not he is making a big of a, a bit one. of a comeback though. I think he's in something important soon. Not that one. And the reason I think this is because we ended up talking about him on OCC recently. I can only save you for so long here, sir. What in the hell were you talking about, sir? It, there's a new asteroid movie coming out. Uh, starring oh, it's a called guy Greenland. N- not it's called named Greenland. Hugh Grant though. Yes, the guy that it's starring is Gerald Butler, I believe. Gerard Butler. Yeah, that guy, Gerard. From 300? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is Sparta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, you just insulted everybody involved in any of these projects, and we're going to move terrible. on. Anyway, that puppy <laughs> was really fucking old, and it may have had a piece of a woolly rhino stuffed up its ass by a hunter-gatherer Civilization. looking for good luck pre- um, you know, Armageddon. Search. 2012. For something. Next headline. This one's a lot funnier. And it's well. not. <laughs> Nearly two thirds of U.S. young adults unaware six million Jews killed in the Holocaust. Yo, if if that's one of you out there, please call into the show. Raise help your yourself hand. to a fucking science book. Please do not call into the show. Instead, help yourself to all of the science books and history books. This is from the Guardian. Well, not a- all of them. According to survey of adult, <laughs> yeah, just not the ones written by like neo Nazis. That's probably what. Sure, Coles, that goes without saying. According to a survey of adults 18 to 39, 23% said they believed the Holocaust was a myth, had been exaggerated, or they weren't sure. Eh, it could I, have I really question the people who aren't sure. Yeah. I love, I like, I get that there are psychos who are like, the Holocaust didn't happen, man. It's a conspiracy, man. And I get that there are people who are like, well, yeah, clearly the Holocaust happened because here's all the evidence. I don't get people who are like, I don't, maybe. like I don't know where I stand on the Holocaust anymore, frankly. I've seen good people on both sides of the argument, and I'm just no longer certain. Yeah, that's kind of terrifying. Or you're just that, like, that, you lack that much confidence in your own intelligence and education that when you're presented with three choices, the Holocaust happened, the Holocaust didn't happen, or I'm not sure, you go, ah, I'm not sure, and then you run away from the surveyor. Yeah, I'm assuming that's where a lot of these. When they break it down state by state, that's the that's the funniest part of this entire article. It's it's uh, the states that you would think don't do well. Oh fuck you, man! Don't do very well. Almost two thirds of young American adults do not know that six million Jews were killed during the Holocaust, and more than one in ten believe Jews caused the Holocaust. A new survey has found revealing shocking levels of ignorance about the greatest crime of the 20th century, as the Guardian puts it. Shocking levels of ignorance indeed, though. 
This is insane. More. According to the study of millennial and Gen Z adults aged between 18 and 39, almost half could not name, 48% could not name a single concentration camp or ghetto established during the Second World War. Not one. World War II was talked about, like, so much. I don't understand how these people don't know about It's most know about of this. the history classes you took as a child from like fucking eighth grade high school. To, yeah, from 8th grade to 12th grade, World War II was talked about at, in every single history class that we did. Unless you're one. in Texas, in which case you learn mostly Texas history until you're 15. Uh, you learn the Alamo over and over and over and over and over and over, and, over. and then they're like, oh, by the way, World War II, and then you get back to Davy Crockett and and... and Daniel Boone. Daniel Bowie? Bowie Knife? David Bowie? Do you guys Who the fuck so, knows, man? I wonder if there's a percentage of people in Texas that don't think the Alamo actually happened. Probably not. It's too ingrained. Too ingrained. There's probably more people that think the Holocaust didn't happen in we Texas lost. than the Alamo. We, Texas lost the Battle of the Alamo. That's correct. Don't you guys celebrate that every year? No. I thought you did. Never once celebrated it. Been here 33 years. I thought it was like a day. It probably is. I'm just saying, personally, I've never been part of an Alamo celebration. Okay. It's never a thing that's occurred. It is a thing that we literally do. De- they, that's what they teach us in history for like 15 years. They're like, all right, we got to make sure you understand what happened specifically in this state. Then we'll see if we can get to the, to the rest of the country. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Which is why it's not shocking that one of the states that has problems with the old, uh, you know, Holocaust memory thing is Texas. Texas. Well, it says nearly 44% of those questioned were able to at least identify Auschwitz, but only uh, but six out of ten respondents in Texas could not name a single concentration camp. That's 60%. Yeah. That means only four out of ten people in Texas could name one. Four. Only 3% of those nationally questioned were familiar with Bergen-Belsen, which is one of the larger ones, up there with Auschwitz and Dachau and the like. However, I don't know how they're all pronounced. They fucking... You should know at least one off the top of your dome. No Google needed if you've paid, like, any attention to, like, a, like a fucking watch, watch one World War II documentary. Uh, uh, like, a hundred movies that have been made about World War II. What the fuck have you been doing? Go watch Band of Brothers, you doofus. Actually, you know what? I don't think they specifically name a single concentration camp in Band of Brothers. Did they not? Did not everybody They just say they found to... a larger one near somewhere. Did not everyone have to read the book Night? Did you have to read Night when you were in high school? I tried to take a sip of my water with the cap on. Nice. I can't not acknowledge that now because people can watch the show. Oh, absolutely. And the people that can't watch the show, you have to let them know. Uh, Night was about the Night of Broken Glass, right? No, Night was the one that was the journal from the Jewish, um, like the guy that lived, Elie Wiesel. I I believe it's Wiesel, technically. Wiesel? I don't know. But um, spelled with a W. Um, it was like his diary that he kept throughout, uh, what well, was written after the war, technically, so there's some weird constipulations about It was about his experience with his father in the Nazi German concentration camps at Auschwitz and Buchenwald in 1944 and 1945 at the yes. height of the Holocaust toward the end of the Second World War. We had to read this in three separate grades. We had to read this once. Okay. I thought yeah. this was like, this is why I don't understand how these people don't understand what, or don't get it. Or just can just ignore it. I've just been to like it's three Holocaust museums, reading. and that was all it took. I was yeah. like, hey, they seem to have plenty of evidence here. There's no reason for me to question this anymore. Like, I almost sort of get the psychos who are like, the moon landing is a hoax. Because I get how that could have been easily set up, and in the and, context of the Cold War, yeah. why it would have been beneficial to the United States. Yes. There's an argument to be made there for just the general relative fucking theory. But when it comes to the Holocaust, it I mean, like just go to like they have the, sh- the they had a, they had cameras. They started an entire country after that. They had cameras. Israel. Because of this, pretty much. What? Right. right Are you up? claiming Israel was formed post World War Two? Israel, I believe, was formed post World War Two as an official nation. Oh, 1948. Yes. May 1948, but okay, I'm not going to get into the politics oh, of the state of Israel. Obviously, this it's feels been like around- you, you. This feels like you've just dragged me into a very sticky situation that I'm going to Homer Simpson gif my saying, way the fuck out of immediately. The world 
felt obligated to, or not obligated, but like cre- allowed. Because Israel's is the Bible and a shit. Jewish state, yes, obviously. But I'm saying as like a state recognized by most world governments, it was not a thing before World War II. And a lot of didn't know this. Yeah. Or had forgotten it. Like apparently many have forgotten the Holocaust. <laughs> and remember, the most fucked up thing about this is when they teach you about the Holocaust in like eighth grade. The main point that they hit you over the head with again and again and again and again is those – they try to explain to you, look, this is really fucked up. But yeah. here's why we're teaching you about it. It's so because we those it. who forget history are doomed to repeat it. Yes. They literally say that shit to every single child learning it because they're like, this is going to be – this is probably going to give you nightmares. Yes. But here's why you have to learn it. This is why we're teaching you about the killing of six million people in eighth grade. And I can I can tell you I've noticed a link between things like Holocaust deniers and and uh, pandemic deniers and the like. I I genuinely believe that a lot of these people can't when it's that the human mind sees something so horrific or scary that it chooses that it, that it chooses the easier route, which is to ignore or deny or just to find a way to rationalize. a a lie sure instead of being able to accept what is incredibly scary i think that's that comes from a lot of people coming from a sheltered life where they haven't had to personally endure unbelievable traumas and hardships that would allow them to relate to the other traumas and hardships it's like the the flip side of the coin of building a country with a lot of blessed people in it is that then those blessed people don't understand what it's like to not be blessed anymore. Yeah. And you have uh, a disconnect, and which is obviously Holocaust a big denies. problem in the in the United States as of the last few hundred years, years or so. Yeah. Anyway, on to the last and final <laughs> insane headline of the day. World's oldest animal sperm discovered trapped in 100 million year old amber. This is on, on like, some straight-up Jurassic Park shit, That's man. That's what I was going to say. Where's, when's the park open? But the funniest thing about when you read any column about this, look, I'm not a scientist, so, uh, again, Mr. Scientist, I'm not going to get into this. It's a 100 million year observe, year-preserved collection of 39 ostracods. The thing that I keep noticing when I read the columns about this particular discovery is that it says giant sperm everywhere. The words giant sperm... Male clasper, sperm pumps, they're, they're used re- uh, repeatedly. Well, you, you know what they say. Hmm. S- sperm is like cell phones. They just keep getting smaller. That's, you know. Apparently, because this revealed that these enormous swimmers were one-third the body length of the adult ostracods. The Wait, sperm what? were one-third. It'd be like if when you busted, what <laughs> came out was a third your height. Like that a, is so terrifying. Okay, and then let's take it a step <laughs> further and say it looks like you and shit. It's just a child. You shoot ch- actual f- fully formed little Chris Colsons out. That would be fucked up. That's the new version of warfare. Then we wouldn't need to fight normally anymore. It would just it'd just be a horny off. There's also a there's a competition for oldest sperm found. Oh. And this one won the competition beating the oldest specimen prior by 50 million years. Wow. That's that's so much time. <laughs> You know when you're, like, in college and you're disgusting and you, like, come somewhere and then you leave it? Like a sock or a towel or a shirt or on your own bed <laughs> or whatever. Or like, you, you know, know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, We've yeah, all yeah, been yeah, there. Yeah, behind the parking And then garage. it, like, gets kind of gross. Imagine 50 million years and the sperm being one-third the size of your body. Why? Why um, imagine that, you may be asking? That, because that's why you come here. That I cannot tell you, my friends. RBP332 is brought to you by Bird Dogs, makers of the most comfortable all-purpose shorts in the fucking world. You can literally wear them to do anything, anywhere, at any time. They're gym shorts with a built-in silky soft inner liner that makes underwear obsolete. And now Bird Dogs makes pants with built-in underwear. And without it, if you're afraid of change, you fucking coward. They're the most breathable, summer-friendly, golfing your dick off pants you've ever owned. Perfect for the golf course, the office, a nice meal out on the town. They look great. Nobody will even know you're a thousand times more comfortable than they are in your Bird Dogs pants. They're shocking 
surprisingly comfortable. Honestly, it feels like you're wearing nothing, like you're walking around like Winnie the Pooh with a top on and no bottoms, just bare-assed. They dry faster than a bathing suit. You can hit a workout, jump straight into the pool, get out, dry off in the sun, then wear your bird dogs to drive around in your Tesla because you have a Tesla now, then drive that Tesla back home and wash it with your Golden Retriever Elvis because you're wearing bird dogs, and you can do anything. Go to birddogs.com, enter the promo code RBP when you check out, and they will throw in a free pair of nunchucks. Nunchucks. Like the Ninja Turtles used. That kind of nunchucks. Birddogs.com, code RBP, boom, free nunchucks with your order. Enjoy your bird dogs. You will never want to take them off. They are a safe space for all your most valuable possessions. Next segment. Listen to this if you started fantasy football 0-1. So you started fantasy football 0-1. Wow. The entire offseason to prepare. And then some, thanks to an international pandemic. And this is the squad you came up with. Three of your starters are literally unrecognizable randos. The bad news is you literally could not have a worse record right now. Also, nobody in the league takes you seriously. Being 0-1 after week one, regardless of how inaccurate this sentiment may be, literally makes you the scum of the earth to everyone who achieved victory during their first bout. They look down at you and they laugh. I know this because I'm one of you. Again. Again. The good news is... He's been there before, many times. And week one doesn't mean dick. Now week two... That sounds like something. something week else, two is your time to shine. Week one, coming in, we didn't know. Weird off-season, strange international pandemic, weird circumstances, who's going to be where, where are the quarter... Tom Brady's a fucking buccaneer. Nobody knows what's happening. Week one, hard to know. Week two, time to turn it on. Make the proper adjustments. Adjustments. You got to grind that waiver wire. And adjustments, though. Make some deceiving trades. Take your league mates for granted. Take them for everything it's worth. Their worth. It's time to turn the tide. It's you're the fucking comeback. If the Denver Nuggets have proven anything, it's that being down 0-1 certainly doesn't mean shit. One week, one loss. Who even fucking cares, man? Week one might as well be the preseason or a warm-up round. The Lakers didn't care. Particularly this year, where nobody knows what the shit is happening. Cam Newton is the quarterback of the Patriots. Fuck yeah. Up is down. Left is right. And even though I already have a top five tight end in Mark Andrews. I'm ripping Dallas Godair off the waiver wire because fuck everyone else in this league. Remember, 0-1 fantasy football franchise owner. It's you against the world this season. This shit is like Game of Thrones, and when you play, you either win or you die. So pull your head out of your ass, read the books, read the manuals, do your research. Let's get this week two win to take us back to 500 and launch our title run. It's the year of the comeback. Week one doesn't even count. And anything is possible. Coles, I'm assuming you're 1-0. Oh. I am 1-0, oh. yeah. Well, nobody cares about 1-0, oh guy. Also, uh, Ross didn't mention that. Wait, are you 0-1 oh in both of your leagues right now? Did you make it in the top 500? Huh? Of your league that's important? No. Oh. I won the one that doesn't matter, and I lost oh, the one okay, that matters. Okay, 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 okay. Gotcha. I well, crushed well, in our okay. RBP league. We're in a league with some uh, some members of the RBP Discord, and uh, no, I I dominated thoroughly. Shouts to Xavier. Sorry, you took it on the chin. Well, I mean, at least you. This speech you is know, for you in that league, Xavier. Have in something my, to come home. In with. my league that matters, matters. That's but expensive and that has a lot of bragging rights tied to it. I'm 0 and 1, so I'm I'm here to help us all, all of us who are 0 and 1. You're it's welcome. Your, it is your the comeback. This is a perfect time to come back to 1 and 1. And then ride that baby out all the way to the end of the season. Ride that high. Ride the wave. Work the waiver wire. Get the people you need. Make the adjustments. Sit down with yourself. You look yourself in the mirror. Figure out what needs to be done to your team. I took Godair. To make it the best that you can possibly make it. I've got my adjustments. I'm solid. You look solid. who did good. You look who did bad. You swap them around. You give your players a phone call. Send them an email. Quick letter. Fan mail. You tell them to buckle up. You need them. And let's get rolling. Speaking of making adjustments, RBP332 is also brought to you by Keeps. As guys, so much of our identity is wrapped up in our hair. From how it feels after getting a fresh cut to the way it's perfectly styled before going out, that's why when we get into our 20s and 30s and start noticing the first signs of hair loss, it definitely feels like panic time because, let's face it, no guy is ever ready to go bald. And thankfully now there's Keeps, the simple and easy way to keep 
your hair. The good news, with today's advancements in science, Keep offers proven treatments that can combat the symptoms of hair loss and help you keep the hair you have at half the cost of your local pharmacy. You used to have to go to the doctor's office for your hair loss prescription. Now, thanks to Keeps, you can visit a doctor online, get hair loss medication delivered right to your home. They make it easy. They deliver your medication every three months. You can say goodbye to the pharmacy checkout lines and awkward doctor visits. Fuck all that. I have friends that have clearly started to struggle getting into my early 30s now, and uh, they've started to struggle with their hair loss, and they refuse to acknowledge it or take action for too long. Guys that we all in our friend group started noticing it, you know, some of them as early as college, and it was like, ah, do something, and they didn't, and now things are starting to get weird up top of the dome. And I have friends who actively began combating their hair loss issues the second they saw them sprouting up, no pun intended, and they're so much better off, so don't wait, don't delay, don't cost yourself luscious locks. Get in there now you and show your dome locks. you care. Found out why, find out why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors and more than 100,000 men trust Keeps for their hair loss prevention medication. Keeps treatments start at just $10 per month. Plus, for a limited time, you can get your first month free. First month free. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to Keeps.com slash RBP. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash RBP to receive your first month of treatment for free. Keeps dot com slash RBP. Next segment. National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. Many of you may not know this because it's honestly not something that's uh, publicized enough. But September is National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. I believe also last week, I, I think it was, we have a specific national or it's, it's Suicide Prevention Week or something. Um, the more attention that can be called to suicide as a pandemic in its own right, the better. And throughout the month of September, this is something we're going to focus on talking about a little bit here and there because, as you know, we do focus on mental health on this podcast. So from uh, September 6th through 12th, so what was that? Yeah, it was last, last week. week. Was yeah. National Suicide Prevention Week. World Suicide Prevention Day is on the 10th. So that was six days ago. But this whole month of September, individuals and organizations alike draw attention to the problem of suicide and advocate the prevention of this terrible tragedy. It's the second leading cause of death for ages 10 to 24. One of the leading causes of preventable death in the United States. So during the month also, suicide prevention organizations are conducting prevention and awareness events there's all kinds of different, I mean, if you just Google your zip code and suicide prevention awareness, you'll, you'll find some events, I guarantee you. Um, I'm not looking forward to finding out the numbers from this year. They're not going to be good. Because we were already at historic highs prior to COVID-19, uh, the highest levels since World War II. And the economic and obviously social pressures and all, I mean, everybody's mental health issues are heightened. Everybody who doesn't have mental health issues has heightened risks. It's, it's a, everybody, it, we're all aware in the mental health community that this year is not going to be great in terms of the suicide numbers. So it's something that we've already started to see start to pile up. Um, in a lot of the hardest hit countries, Italy, for example, uh, there have been a lot of issues. A patient jumped out of a hospital window in March while he was awaiting test results to see if he was infected, for example. It was one of the first reported suicides in Italy in March. Um, a lot of frontline workers, a lot of hospital workers, a lot of doctors, nurses, people who are having to work extended hours are dealing with more depression, more heightened circumstances that lead to even more higher suicide rate. It's just a year where more than ever, as we've talked about several times, you need to be there for your people and for yourself. But if you notice somebody is struggling on a level that, that concerns you, where maybe they've isolated themselves for a really long time, or they're saying weird shit that you're like, I don't know if this doesn't sound like... Check in with that person. See if you can get a better feel for their mental state. Talk to their family and your other friends that you share. See what you can do to make sure that they're okay. Because we can all use a little extra nudge this year, for sure. And there are those of us who need a hell of a lot of help. And to keep this from being even worse than it already is going to be in terms of the suicide rates in the United States and abroad, all we can do is continue to talk about it. To talk about what we can do to combat 
suicide as an issue in the U.S. and is and again just everywhere. It's not not just an American issue. This is a human issue. Absolutely. And make sure you, you know, let your people know that they can be emotionally vulnerable with you and let them know that you are an ally for them at all times and for anything that they may do, may need to talk to you about. I mean, for a lot of dudes, that's as simple as literally being like, because I know a lot of guys who, who their friendships don't don't have this element to them. Their friend guys can be close guys, can, but they don't open up to each other. And it could be as simple as saying something like, hey, man, I just wanted to let you know if you're ever going through some shit, you can talk to me about it. Yeah. Like, that's an easy, you know, dude way of saying, like, I'm here for you if you need somebody there for that's you. That's all you have I to say. do. I just, I just reach out to a buddy. If I see on social media or something like that, I'm getting vibes that something might be off. I'll just reach out and say, hey, man, if you need somebody to talk to, here for you. Something could be as simple, simple as that. that. Could be as simple as that. You know. You do as much as you can, but at the end of the day, you know, you have to look out for yourself and help yourself first. You have to keep your own mentals right, and you have to want to help yourself because the better state of mind that you are in mentally, uh, the more mental capacity you have to help others around you. Can't help anybody else if you're not in a good spot yourself. And so this month, do everything you can to put yourself in the best mental situation that you can put yourself in. As well, for as, sure. And as well, as well as reach out to your people around you and give out as much of your mental capacity as you're able to and your emotional capacity to help others around you. You know, look out for one another, especially during this time. And really just as a reminder that it's like uh, that's an ever ongoing fight forever. It's not a thing that, that stops. And, and this year, again, has been an incredible wake up call for so many people worldwide who have realized, oh my God, I filled my life with so many distractions, with so many meaningless distractions and, and frivolities that I had forgotten about what was really important. Well, in the continued expansion upon that revelation, one of the ways you can really make a difference that matters is by being there for people who struggle with issues like depression and uh, try to join in, in the fight against suicide prevention. Or against suicide. In suicide prevention. Don't fight against suicide prevention. That would be fucking weird. Absolutely. There's got to be three people in that club. What? Which club? Oh, the people against the suicide? The anti-suicide prevention club. I would hope it's a very small club. We don't need that one. Just a strange ethos those people have. But, but seriously, like to, be there for your folks. And I'd like to put All out the suicide prevention, National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. As well, just so the number is out there, it's 800-273-8255. Make sure you send that out, tweet that out, make it available. If Say it ever, again. 800-273-8255. There's more than 100 local crisis centers that are a part of this national network, and they're all available 24 hours a day. And shit will pass. It is not worth taking your own life. And throwing away your, your opportunity for more later on. Just because everything is, it feels like it'll never never be good again. It, that, that, is, that is not accurate. Your brain is tricking your ass. Call that number and get yourself some help. For those of you who aren't struggling, be there for your people. Make sure you reach out. Take the time. Because you're going to fucking hate yourself forever if something goes the wrong way and you didn't. All right. All month of September. Remind people about it. National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. OK. And that'll do it for today's show. But before you head out to take on the world, it's time for some very important announcements. First and foremost, you've been saddled with three legal obligations as a result of having listened to this entire podcast. The first of which is that you must rate and review. The second, share the show with one person. The third, support our sponsors for supporting us. We've got a new sponsor today, Poncho Outdoors. Go to ponchooutdoors.com. Use that code RBP. Bird Dogs. Of course, it's birddogs.com. Code RBP for the nunchucks. And then keeps.com slash RBP. Save your hair. Keep Those are your nice. three legal obligations. Do all three of them. Check all three boxes. I'll call out the dogs. You won't have to see me in court. We can all live long and prosper. Follow the show on Instagram at the Ross Bolin Podcast. At the Ross Bolin Podcast on Instagram. We're on Twitter at Ross Bolin Pod at Ross Bolin Pod and Facebook.com slash Ross Bolin Podcast for the, like, 2.5% of humans who still, for some reason, 
operate on Facebook uh, uh, with different brands and, and such. I don't know who you people are, but you're out there, and I lo- God love you. God One of them's Cole's him. mom. One of them. And some of my mom's friends as well. They say that you need to stop giving them so much shit on the Facebook talk. I know. I hear from lots of, uh, let's just say, our older demographic. <laughs> and sure. Which, by the way, I couldn't be more appreciative of it. There's anybody I appreciate more than any other group in our demographic it's our older listenership sure, honestly sure obviously we don't struggle with getting long with younger listeners we struggle with uh maintaining older ones because people take themselves too seriously and can't stand that i say fuck those are the cool ones yeah only the coolest older people listen to this show i would agree with that 100% that is a proven that. scientific fucking fact and i hear from them and they say ross shut the fuck up i use facebook and i say I all right you. i'm sorry it's just jokes. And you blow them a kiss, right? Yeah, but we are on Facebook, and we do put shit up there. Believe it or not, every day we, we post stuff onto our Facebook. It's literally a thing that Chris and I take time out to do just for the 26 of you that are there. Every one of you being ancient. I'm just kidding. Love you all. <laughs> Thank you so much for, uh, for listening and for being here today. Follow me, Ross Bolin, on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at W-R-B-O-L-E-N. At W-R-Bolin on Twitter. I'm active every day. Instagram and Snapchat. Snapchat's where Coles and I pull so many of the photos and videos that are thrown up on at the Ross Bolin Podcast Instagram story. We update our Instagram story every day with photos and videos sent in from our listeners uh, that we find to be funny or entertaining. And again, we gather those through our own personal Snapchats, mine of which is at W-R-Bolin. And also... Last time I'll say it, our Twitch schedule on twitch.tv slash boss rolling. Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, 7 p.m. Central Time every week. Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, 7 p.m. Central Time, twitch.tv slash boss rolling. We got emotes for our subscribers now. One of them is Bill Chungus. They're hilarious. Come follow to be notified when we go live. Subscribe to support the stream. Chris, where can everybody follow you on social media? You can find me on Instagram at chrissc99. You can find me on Twitter at q0uls. And you can find me on Snapchat at chris underscore colson. That's c-o-u-l-s-o-n. Howdy. I almost said Facebook. Because I was singing Facebook in my head. It's okay. Early, earlier, I uh, had one of the most horrible mispronunciations in the, in the history of this podcast, I think. I don't think so. I think it was pretty bad. One, of, one that I'll be laughing so. about for a long time. I can't wait to laugh with you forever. Huzzah! Check out Bolin Media's television and film podcast, Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, otherwise known as OCC, formerly the number one Game of Thrones podcast in the entire world, Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, where me and my co-host, Mr. Barrett Dudley, one of my best friends of 17 years, cover the best in television and film each and every week. Right now, we're covering The Boys, season two on Amazon. Love The Boys. We're covering up through episode three this week. We're closing out coverage of Yellowstone, season one. This week with the uh, penultimate and finale of season one of Yellowstone. And then Lovecraft, Co- Lovecraft Country on HBO, which is nuts. Uh, we're, uh, I think, through episode five this week on Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, available wherever you're listening to the Ross Boland Podcast. And that will do it for RBP 332, produced by Mike Moody Garcia of Permanent Record Studios in Austin, Texas. We will be back on Monday with RBP 333. And of course, this Friday, first on Patreon.com slash Ross Boland Podcast with another exclusive premium ad-free episode for dues-paying members of the RBP gang pledging their monthly support to keep the podcast alive and thriving. Minimum of just $5 monthly on Patreon.com slash Ross Boland Podcast to get an ad-free episode every Friday, a third episode of the show. We put one out every Monday and Wednesday on all the different channels you're listening on right now. And then on Friday, there's one place to get RBP, and that's on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Ross Boland Podcast with a minimum pledge of just $5 monthly. Come through, support the show, get more RBP. You are not alone. Podmen get paid. Respect Mr. Park. Strength and honor. Gang, gang, gang. Peace be with you. And, and also, also with you. you.